Hi, I'm Danny Gottlieb. I'd like to welcome you to my instructional drum video. And what I'm going to do is talk about a lot of different concepts uh, dealing with the way that I play the drums and things I've worked on over the years. I've been lucky enough, uh, I've been playing for over 30 years now, and I've been lucky enough to have uh, experienced quite a few different uh, groups and uh, travel experiences. And also, I've been lucky enough to study with some of the greatest drummers in the world, mainly my longtime teacher, Joe Morello, who, of course, is uh, so well known for playing with the Dave Brubeck group. I'm going to talk about some of the techniques that I study with Joe and also some of my other teachers. Uh, I was lucky enough to study with the late, great Gary Chester and also with Ed Sof and a little with Jack DeJanet and a little with Jimmy Cobb. Uh, and I'll be mixing a lot of that stuff up and also describing some of my experiences and hopefully there'll be some information that you will find useful and helpful. Uh, I've also been teaching at the University of North Florida now for uh, quite a while and I will be discussing things that I talk to my students about uh, and hopefully we'll be able to give you some information uh, that will be helpful. Uh, I would like to give you a little background about me. Again, I've been playing for over 30 years. I started playing the drums a little bit late for most people. I started at about the age of 14 or 15. I was actually a cello player first, which, uh, lucky for the world of cello players, <laughs> I'm still not, do I'm not doing it. Although, I think playing a stringed instrument actually helped my touch on the drum set. And it's interesting because my teacher, Joe Morello, was also a violin player at first. And there's something about playing other instruments that seems to help your ability uh, in terms of sensitivity. I know, uh, of course, Jack DeJanet is a great piano player, and there's a lot of other uh, drummers who play different instruments, so certainly that helps. But I started as a cello player growing up in Union, New Jersey. And in my uh, oh, uh, middle school at that time, they called it junior high school years, I was just fascinated with the drum set and always wanted to, uh, to take drum lessons. There was something about the drums, and I wasn't actually counting that well, and I ended up taking a summer music school course with my first instructor, Mr. Geist, who I still call Mr. Geist today, 40-something, 50-something years later. Um, and I took a summer music school course, and I started playing the drums, and I just took to it. And in my second year of playing, I, f I went to a local music store in Union, New Jersey, and there was this guy teaching there, Joe Morello, whose picture was on the back of the Ludwig drum catalog. And I didn't really know who he was. I just figured he must be famous. He must be great. He's on the catalog. And I went for an evaluation, and I started studying with him. This was uh, when I was 15, and I'm 56 as we record this, so I'm still a student of Joe's, and I've been with him on and off for many, many years. And a, big, a very big influence for me, I was lucky enough to not only have studied an incredible technique through Joe's teaching, but also to be around a professional at a very, very young age, which helped me prepare for the life as a professional musician. Um, I graduated high school in New Jersey, went to college at the University of Miami, got a degree, met many of the people that I still perform with today during my college years. So I'm a big advocate of the educational system. Again, I've studied all my life, uh, and by going to college, I had a chance to perform with an ensemble virtually every day and meet a lot of students at the school, many of which Mark Egan, Pat Metheny, uh, the late uh, Jaco Pastorius was there, Gil Goldstein, Clifford Carter. Uh, Dave Weiss brought a lot of different friends that I've uh, still am associated with today uh, went to the University of Miami and we're still friends so of course now being involved on the teaching side I advocate um, really you know enjoying the, the the educational system because you can really get a lot of ex playing experience and, and make a lot of contacts in school well graduated college went on the road in 1975 my first gig was playing with a uh, singer who I still uh, love his performance, Bobby Rydell, who was a child star from Philadelphia. Uh, and I went on the road. We went to Australia in 1976. And then Pat uh, Matheny, who I had known from college, got me a gig playing with Gary Burton. I got to do my first recording in 1976 called Passengers for the ECM label. And it's funny because here we're shooting this video, uh, I don't know, over 30 years later. And here's the symbol that I used on my first recording. I found it in the garage the other day, and I decided to use it. So this symbol is actually on the recording passengers. It's a Zildjian flat, and it was my first experience of using a flat symbol, mainly influenced by one of my other teachers, Bob Moses, who was a, a big flat symbol player. Well, Matheny Group uh, started uh, about a year after the Gary Burton Group, and I got to play with Pat from 1977 to 83, and I got to record six recordings with him and tour the world. We went to, to Japan and Europe almost every other month, it seemed like. Uh, and then uh, I ended up leaving the group. It was time to make a change. Pat wanted to go in a different direction. And uh, in the uh, early uh, 80s, I found myself living in New York City and not quite sure what direction things were going to go. 
And uh, through Mark Egan, we put a group together called Elements, and we played together for many, many years, and we ended up becoming the rhythm section with Randy Brecker and his uh, wife at the time, Iliani, Iliani Elias, piano player. Um, and then uh, basically became a New York session and uh, traveling jazz musician for many, many years until I relocated to Florida at the end of the 90s. One of the other, uh, two other significant experiences that I had, one was playing with the great guitar player John McLaughlin. I got to play in his band for three years from 84, 84, 5, 6 with Bill Evans and Mitch Foreman and later Jim Beard. It was a great experience getting to play with John and then being a member of the Gil Evans Orchestra, which was uh, a big band run by the late, great Gil Evans, who of course we all know from the experiences of uh, composing with Miles Davis. He had this, I want to say crazy big band, but it was a big band that would play every Monday in New York at Sweet Basil for years. Um, and it was a, f it was a free for all. We ne you never knew what was going to happen next. Most big bands, you know, you make a list of who's going to be the next soloist and what saxophone player is going to play. And with the Gil Evans Orchestra, it was just start a song and see what happens. And if Hiram Bullock was playing guitar, most of the time we'd end up playing Purple Haze somewhere within the middle of a Charles Mingus song. Or if David Sanborn was playing, or Lou Soloff, Mark Egan, Gil Goldstein. It used to take all kinds of different directions, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my musical life. And in fact, those of you who are watching this who would like to check it out, uh, on YouTube there are actually some videos of Gil Evans' orchestra with Sting. We did a concert in Italy in the 80s. And there's a bunch of those um, that are available to watch. In fact, you can even find them on my website, dannygottlieb.org, and I've got a link to some of those Gil Evans Sting recordings. But that was another significant uh, experience in my life. And now I'm teaching college at University of North Florida and still playing. And I also travel around the world at the moment with Gary Sinise, a very well-known actor who's also a terrific bass player. And we play a lot of concerts, mainly for the USO. I've got my USO patch here. Uh, and we play for the troops and do a lot of benefit concerts. And it makes, uh, brings playing music to another level when you're actually doing benefits for people around the world and uh, involved in, in fundraising, which I really enjoy doing too. So that's a little bit about my background. Lots of experience playing I would say I'm mainly a jazz player, but I got to play with Booker T and the MGs. I got to play in the Blues Brothers. So I'm a big fan of, I guess, growing up in the 60s into the 70s in the college age, uh, college years, when music was being fused between jazz and rock and the boundaries were being, uh, you know, cut down. Uh, you know, you listen to Jimi Hendrix now and Mitch Mitchell sounds like a jazz drummer or The Doors, John Densmore sounds like a jazz drummer uh, compared to, you know, some of the drumming that we have today. So I was a, just a music fan growing up in that time period. And I think that's reflective in my playing and some of the things we're going to talk about on this video. A lot of different styles, not only jazz, but based in the jazz tradition, some rock influences, some Latin influences. I got to play in the band of Ayerto for a couple of years, who was a, another mentor and teacher to me. And we'll talk about that um, and just cover a lot of different things from basics to more advanced. My goal is that hopefully there's something in here for everybody. Whether you're, you're a beginner, hopefully these concepts will be interesting and a place to start. And if you're an intermediate or advanced drummer, maybe there's some things in here that you haven't thought about or it's a different approach that you can add to the things that you can already do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. And uh, uh, again, thanks very much. <laughs> 